All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation a to the power of 9 plus a to the power of 6 is equal to 36. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting a to the power of 9 as a to the power of 3 times 3 and rewriting a to the power of 6 as a to the power of 3 times 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So a to the power of 3 times 3 turns into a to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And a to the power of 3 times 2 turns into a to the power of 3 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to let a to the power of 3 equal to the variable t. So if I substitute in t, I get t to the power of 3 plus t squared is equal to 36. And this means that t to the power of 3 plus t squared minus 36 is equal to 0. So what we have here is an equation that's not quadratic. So to actually solve this, what I'm going to do is find one solution of t and then use that solution to find the remaining, one, remaining solutions of t. So to find that one solution, we just have to test values of t. So I'm going to first start with t equals 0. If t equals 0, I get 0 to the power of 3 plus 0 squared minus 36. And this does not equal to 0. Now I'm going to try t equals 1. If t equals 1. I get 1 to the power of 3 plus 1 squared minus 36. Again, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 minus 36 is negative 34. That does not equal 0. Now I'm going to try t equals 3. Or sorry, t equals 2. If t equals 2, I get 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 squared minus 36. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 minus 36 is negative 34. Or sorry, negative 24, which is not equal 0. Now we have t equals 3, 3 to the power of 3 plus 3 squared minus 36. 3, 3 to the power of 3 is 27 plus 9, which is 36 minus 36. This does equal 0, meaning t equals 3 is a solution. And this also means t minus 3 equals 0. So I can, I'm going to now divide t minus 3 with t to the power of 3 plus t squared minus 36. So I have 3 to the power of 3 plus t squared minus 36 divided by t minus 3. And this should give the remaining solutions for t. So to divide this, I'm going to by factor out t minus 3. I get t minus 3 times t squared minus 4t squared minus 12t plus 12t minus 36 is equal to 0. And I can factor out four t from here. So I have this times t minus 3. And I can factor out 12. So I get 12 times t minus 3. Now from here, if I factor out t minus 3 from all of this, I get t minus 3 times t squared plus 4t plus 12. Meaning, I have two equations. I get t minus 3 is equal to 0, and t squared plus 4t plus 12 is equal to 0. So obviously, we already know that t equals 3 is a solution. But for t squared plus 4t plus 12 equals 0, well, let's first do b squared minus 4ac to see if there's e even any real solutions. b squared is 16. I get 16 minus 4 times 1 times c, which is 12. And this is less than 0, meaning this is a negative solution. And you can't take the square root of a negative number for a real solution. So there's no solution for this. Meaning t equals 3 is my only solution. And now recall how a to the power of 3 is equal to t. Meaning a to the power of 3 is equal to 3. And a is equal to the cube root of 3. All right. So in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100. So to solve this equation, I'm going to first start by taking the power of 5 on both sides. Now I can use the property a to the power of m to the power of n 
is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m on x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5. We can think of x to the power of 5 as m and 5 as n, so I can switch the places of these two. So now I get x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now, 100, I'm going to rewrite that as 10 squared. So now I have 10 squared to the power of 5. And another property of exponents is that if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5 is going to equal 10 to the power of 2 times 5, which is 10 to the power of 10. And now my final property of exponents that I'm going to use for this video is that if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x to the power of 5 is equal to 10. Now to solve this, we need to get rid of this power of 5 by taking the fifth root on both sides. So the fifth root of x to the power of 5 is x. So I get x is equal to the fifth root of 10. This is my solution. Please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to your friends. Thank you. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation 1 to the power of x is equal to 2. So before we even start solving this, if let's say x is equal to 1, then I have 1 to the power of 1, which is equal to 1. And if x is equal to 2, then I have 1 to the power of 2, which is also equal to 1. And you can go even x 1 to the power of 10 is still equal to 1. So you may be thinking, what possible value of x can make 1 to the power of x equal to 2? So let's try solving this. What I'm first going to do is start by taking ln of both sides. So I get ln of 1 to the power of x is equal to ln of 2. And ln is the same thing as the natural log. And the reason I took that ln on both sides is because it comes with a property that states that if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front, so this turns into b times ln a. So in this case, I have ln 1 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times ln 1 is equal to ln 2. And you may be thinking we could just divide both sides by ln 1, and x would equal ln 2 over ln 1. However, the only problem with this is that ln 1 is equal to 0. And remember, you can't, anything divided by 0 is undefined, so this would be undefined. So we know that this equation has no real solution, but it could still have imaginary solutions. So to actually solve this, I'm going to use something known as Euler's formula. And basically what this formula is, is if I have something in the form e to the power of i times theta, this is equal to cosine of theta plus i times sine of theta. And I know to many of you watching this video, this may just sound like a bunch of gibberish, but just hang on. So let's say that theta is equal to zero, right? Say that theta equals zero. So now I get e to the power of i times 0 is equal to cosine of 0 plus i times sine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, and sine of 0 is 0. So I get this all is equal to 1. Now, what if we say theta is equal to 2k pi? And k 
is just a substitution for all real numbers. So, so now I get e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 1 because all we did was we just substituted theta in for 2k pi into this same thing. So now because this is equal to 1, we can sub remember our first equation, which we started with 1 to the power of x equals 2, we can substitute in this for 1, meaning I get e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. So just think of this as 1. So I basically 1 to the power of x equals 2. And now with this, I'm going to take the ln or natural log on both sides. So I have ln e to the power of i times 2k pi to the power of x is equal to 2. So I'm going to now bring this x down using property of natural logarithms. So I get x times ln e to the power of i times 2k pi is equal to 2. Sorry, is equal to ln of 2. Because if you take ln on one side, you have to do the other side. And now... I can also move i times 2k pi to the front. So I have i times 2k pi times x times ln e is equal to ln 2. ln e is simply equal to 1. So I get x is equal to ln 2 over i times 2k pi. And now I'm going to multiply this by i over i. So I get x is equal to negative i times ln 2 over 2k pi, because i squared is negative 1. So this is my solution.